This is season three of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. I'm your host, Kathleen Dames, and over the course of our 12-week season, we will knit basic cable together. An awesome worsted weight cable pullover. Hello, my friends, and welcome to season three, episode three of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Today, we're talking about gauge. I know, it's like, ugh, the thing you don't wanna do, you just wanna be knitting, right? Well, I understand, and I have some suggestions for you on how to make getting gauge fun. Well, if not fun, at least productive. So what I recommend is trying out a sleeve instead of a gauge swatch, especially since we're knitting basic cable in the round, the thing to do is to knit your swatch in the round. That way you're sure that you're getting you're creating the same kind of stitches that you're gonna be creating in your whole garment. And a sleeve is less commitment. You start with fewer stitches way down here at your tiny little wrist, um, but you still will be increasing up to the point on your upper arm and you get a good number of stitches and you can measure that in the round. Make sure you're getting the right number of stitches. And if you're not, you can you haven't knit so much. You haven't cast on 200 some stitches or whatever it is for the body of your sweater. So that is my recommendation, is to do a sleeve. If you're, if you're fairly certain of your gauge, if you're really not certain, definitely start with something smaller. So as you know, I'm knitting premium cable now and I started off uh, muddling around with a tiny little tube. I can barely get it over my, my hand. Um, this was my first gauge swatch with the pattern I was planning on using. I'm using a couple different uh, cable. One's a cable and one's a twist stitch, actually. And uh, I wanted to check on that. And I decided I wanted to do stripes. I knew that I wanted to combine two different colors of this lovely Zalti yarn. But after this, and I was like, okay, I think I'm on the right track, but maybe I wanna do two row or four row. Uh, uh, color stripes. And so I did do a flat swatch, but I wouldn't use this to definitively say I'd gotten gauge. Um, but you can see all the different things you can do with two colors and how the stripes uh, fall out when you use, when you do different numbers of, of rows or rounds for your stripes. But the real thing here is my sleeve. And I did my first sleeve, very excited. The other thing, of course, if you knit a sleeve, you only have one more sleeve to knit. <laughs> I just, I never became a sock knitter. I, I have a hard time sometimes with what we call second sock syndrome or in, for me, it's second sleeve syndrome where I have to do the exact same thing over again. I always wanna be doing something new. Um, and so if you do one sleeve now and then you do the body and then you do the other sleeve, then you, when you've done the second sleeve, it's time to get to the fun, exciting decreases of the yoke. So I definitely think a sleeve is a great way to get yourself motivated and keep yourself going and excited about your project. Um, if you really can't, then you can do a traditional tension swatch or tension square, but I really do think if you are gonna be working the whole project in the round, which we are here, then doing a gauge swatch flat kind of does you a disservice. It's not as precise. And while knitting is flexible, which is one of the things I love about it, it is best to go in giving it your best effort. And so I recommend a sleeve. And I did a sleeve for mine. And then you have to measure it, right? So I prefer to use a firm uh, item for measuring gauge rather than like a tape measure because a tape measure can be a little stretchy and you can fudge it a little more with this, you know, solid piece of metal in this case. This is an old Susan Bates. It's called a knit check. And check is spelled with only one C, C-A-G-K. So um, I think uh, they could make that a registered trademark. So that's pretty funny. But this is a great tool. It also is a needle sizer. Uh, I don't like that it only gives you this two inch sort of window to look at. So I don't often look through the window. I may start off looking through the window, but generally I am gonna to wanna to measure over four inches. And that's something that you might wonder, why is gauge in most patterns, and certainly in mine, expressed over four inches? Why don't you just say it's five and a quarter stitches to the inch? Well, 
If I did that, you would make a swatch that's this big, right? And you would measure and you'd be like, well, I'm kind of getting that. But you can't really tell a quarter of an inch, right? So the more, the larger your gauge swatch is, the more accurate your gauge measurement is going to be because you're going to average it out. Because not every stitch, unless you're a machine, not every stitch is exactly the same. We are human. Stitches vary slightly. But overall, in the aggregate, as you measure a bigger, bigger piece, you get more accurate information. And that's another reason why I like doing a sleeve because up at the top, you know, depending on the size of your arms, your, um, your upper arm circumference is going to be somewhere from like nine and a half to sixteen and a half stitches uh, around, and so even flat, that's four and three quarters inches that you can measure across for your gauge. So that gives you like it just gives you better information. So I'm going to kind of measure here on Lady Jane. You should measure your piece flat. After you, um, and so what I did, I knit this yesterday, or over the last couple days, I knit my sleeve. I washed it last night, um, just in the sink, and squeezed out the water, just like in the blocking. So if you've watched episode 11 of previous seasons, you know how I block a sweater. So it's the same thing, just small. And um, it may seem like extra work and extra waiting, and especially if it's humid, your swatch doesn't dry quickly but it really gives you all this great information and you've already got this sleeve done. So, wash and dry, wait overnight, like give it a bath before bed, put it out, hopefully by morning it's dry. Mine's still a little damp, so um, it's not strictly speaking the most accurate quite yet, but I'm, I'm confident. I have swatched a number of times and I am confident. But you should wait till yours is dry and then lay it out on a flat surface preferably a firm surface, a table. Um, try not to, I know I do it, but try not to measure it like on your lap or, or on the couch. You really want a nice firm surface for measuring. And um, some people like to do, they put pins in four inches apart, they measure, they measure the pin space, and then they count the stitches. I tend to just lay my, um, my gauge tool across the piece and count the stitches from the zero mark up to four. It could even do it up to five because my sleeve is, um, is about a 12 inch circumference up at the top. So, you know, up here, look at all that lovely fabric. You really can tell where um, you can be sure to measure carefully and know what your gauge is. And uh, if you measure over five inches, then you are gonna need to do a little math to check it against four inches. So you can just stop at four, but also this, this eliminates, you know, stitches near the edge are a little more prone to stretch out. They're just gonna be a little more wonky. The even stitches are in the middle of your fabric. That's, that's the meat of it, right? So what you wanna do is you're gonna measure and you're gonna measure it where stockinette. And I do give you the gauge in both stockinette and cable for this pattern because you probably want to know both, but uh, if you know your stockinette gauge, then we should be able to uh, have similar uh, gauges on the cable pattern. But it's really best to, to measure over stockinette. Now, some patterns only express the gauge for the cable patterns. And the thing is, cable patterns, um, when you twist those stitches around one another, you are tightening up the fabric. You can see I'm tightening up my shoulders. It really is like that. It sort of tightens everything up um, and it makes a tighter, firmer fabric. So you need more stitches to the inch to get to, to have the same amount of size. Did I say that right? <laughs> but whatever, we're doing it over stockinette for our measurements. And then I've done the adjustments for you for the cables so that it's still gonna fit and allowing for those side panels in stockinette. So if you decide not to do side panels in stockinette stitch, you are going to need probably a few more stitches at the side to compensate for those cables. So that's why I put in those panels at the side. They're also kind of slimming. They're a great place for, I'm gonna be doing waist shaping in my premium cable. So, you know, that's one of those things and, you know, not everybody's really looking at your side all the time, so it doesn't need to be cabled there. So we can do some special work in there. It's also a great place to make adjustments. If you are between sizes, um, you could throw in a few extra stitches, do the same number on each side, 
and you can have a slightly larger sweater that will fit you perfectly. Or you could take away a few stitches, um, but don't take away too many because the stitches and the underarm stitches, there is a correlation there. If you are knitting a pattern that only expresses itself in terms of the cable stitch counts, um, one thing you can do, Elizabeth Zimmerman recommends making a hat, cast on for half of the number of stitches called for at the body cast on, the, you know, at the hip, and um, work those cable patterns. And basically, you'll just be doing generally one time around, um, whereas the body, of course, you do it front and back should be the same thing. But if you, so if you do that, and let's say you want to knit a 40 inch sweater, you cast on half of the number of stitches, that should give you a 20 inch hat or a cowl, um, and it gives you a chance to get to know your stitches. So that's another way to do a gauge swatch that also will give you something useful at the end. Uh, I do prefer the sleeve because I just want to be done with the actual sweater. But if you're also looking to have gifts for people or you need a hat or a cowl, um, doing th that version of a gauge swatch is a useful exercise. And even if you discover that you wanted it to be 20 inches around for your 40 inch sweater and it's 18, which means you need to add in quite a few more stitches, uh, someone can wear an 18 inch hat you know someone, or if you don't, there's a charity that will take that hat and keep somebody warm this winter. So um, I, I don't look at it as wasted time, and I don't think you should either, because it gives you a chance to get to know your yarn, your needle, and the stitch patterns. So it's all good, it's all good effort. The real question about getting gauge is getting gauge, is having the right number of stitches per inch, right? I remember when I was a young knitter, way back in the mists of time, I would get confused about if you didn't get gauge, what you were supposed to do. So let's say you are a tight knitter. I'm a loose knitter. I've told you this before. I'm happy to tell you again. I'm a loose knitter. I tend to knit in a relaxed sort of way. So I tend to need a smaller needle size for a given yarn than somebody who is a tight knitter who works very tightly and makes really snug stitches around their needle. In that case, if you know you're a tight knitter, do not try to get gauge with the same needle size that I recommend in the pattern. The thing about a pattern is I am telling you how I did it, what yarn I used, what needle I used, what stitches I cast on. And of course, I can only tell you how I did it in my size, but then I do a lot of math to tell you for different sizes how to do the same thing with the same yarn and the same needles, getting the same fabric out of those, out of that combination. But if you're a different kind of knitter, you are going to be creating a different kind of fabric with those, that yarn and those needles. So if you're a tight knitter, go up to a larger size needle and you will probably get close to the fabric I'm getting. If you are an even looser knitter than I am, whoa, <laughs> you will need to go down a little more. So that's sort of a general fabric concept, but when you are trying to get gauge and you are getting too many stitches to the inch, so let's say I'm getting, I got four and a quarter stitches, right, in stockinette stitch, so it's 21, st 21 stitches over four inches, you are getting 24 stitches, right? Using the same yarn and I've used a US six needle. So that means you are getting six stitches to the inch. You're getting, if you have too many stitches, they're packed in there, you need to make your stitches bigger. You need fewer stitches to get gauge. For that, you need to go to a larger needle that will make the stitches larger and they will take up, uh, the same number of stitches will take up more space. Okay, so you want, if you want to get five and a quarter stitches to the inch or 21 stitches over four inches, you may need to go up to probably an eight, uh, would be my initial recommendation. That's a US eight. Um, I'm going to let you figure out the metric equivalent because I tend to think in terms of the US needle sizes. And if you are getting too few stitches to the inch, you need more stitches. In your inches and so you need to go down in needle size and you make smaller stitches and you can pack more of them into that same space and I think that's the thing to remember is how many stitches you have in this space and how many you need 
So if you don't have enough, you need a smaller needle to make more stitches. The stitches need to be smaller actually uh, to fit more in the same space. And if you have too many, if you have a lot packed in there and you need fewer packed in there, you need to make those stitches bigger with a bigger needle. So that's sort of the general idea on what you need to do to adjust for gauge. This also comes into play if you are using a different yarn weight than I recommend. We're using worsted weight yarn. If you want to use an Aran weight yarn or a DK, you will need to adjust as well, but you will need to do your adjustments a little differently because you probably don't want to get the same gauge I'm getting. If you knit Aran yarn um, at the smaller gauge, which is what I'm using of 21 stitches over four inches, you're gonna end up with a really tight fabric, really kind of dense, heavy fabric. Aran yarn, you probably are looking more at like four stitches to the inch. Um, but, and with a DK, you're probably looking at more like five stitches to the inch, right? So, and it sounds like a fraction of an inch, you think like, oh, you know, a quarter of a stitch over an inch. Well, over four inches, that's a whole stitch. Over 40 inches, that's 10 stitches, that's actually um, about two more inches. You know, so, so that does make a difference. That could work out to your advantage though. If you're looking to make an in-between size, you may wanna consider going down to a DK or up to an Aran weight yarn and using the appropriate size, next size up or down in the pattern and following those numbers, you will get a sweater that fits you, that doesn't have the same gauge, but has a great fabric and gives you what you're looking for. And if you are changing to a different yarn weight, uh, bear in mind that generally you'll be able to follow the pattern um, as written. The stockinette, if you're working in stockinette, whatever gauge or whatever uh, stitch pattern you're working in, that's the word, uh, you're still gonna have the same ratio of stitches to rows. And that's, that's an issue that comes in with our raglan shaping because we're working on an angle, we are considering both the stitches and the rows. But the great thing is generally your proportion of stitches to rows remains fairly constant, probably somewhere in the range of two, um, two to three or three to four four rows to three stitches, or three rows to two stitches. Did I have that right? I think I have that right. So that your ratio will be the same, and so you'll still be able to use the same rate of decrease for the raglans, similar rate of increase for the yarn, for the arms. Um, and what you want to do in that case, like if you're using a different size yarn, you hopefully can find a size in the pattern that has a similar cast on number to the number you will need to cast on. So you need to figure out your gauge in your yarn, and you need to do this anyway, but you know you're gonna make an adjustment. So then you need to get it down to what that is per inch. Let's say you're getting five stitches to the inch. Um, well, I'm sorry, let's say you're getting six stitches to the inch instead of uh, five and a quarter. I've been saying four and a quarter, haven't I? It's five and a quarter. 21 stitches is five and a quarter stitches to the inch. So you're getting six. So, and you wanna do, for ease of math, you wanna do the, um, the 40 inch size. So six times 40, that's stitches times inches, uh, gives you 240 stitches. And so look in the pattern and hopefully, I don't have the page with the cast on numbers on it printed out right now, but hopefully there is a size that's close to that. And so you can say, oh, I can cast on for this size, which probably may be the, the 1X size instead of the medium um, or the large, and follow those numbers through the pattern, working to the inch measurements for your actual size. So don't change if there are inch measurements, you know, like for the sleeves, you want them to be 18 inches, you work to that instead of whatever the length is for the size numbers that you're knitting. So you, you only wanna follow the stitch numbers and maintain the pattern measurements if you are changing from size to size. 
If that's not clear, please feel free to write in and ask me. You can hit reply on the newsletter emails. You can post in the forums. You can post here if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, ask me your questions. The live show is coming up. It's November 18th. And I'm also gonna send out a little survey this week as to what time would work for the most people. It's gonna be on YouTube live. Uh, I'm thinking 9.30, 11, or one o'clock on that Friday. And that would be Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but you can ask me your questions ahead of time. That helps me to send in your questions and I will uh, put them together and ask them throughout the live show. So if it's not clear, feel free to, to write and ask and I will answer again, um, hopefully in more detail if that's what you're looking for. Okay, live show, why over four inches? Did I tell you about why, why you should do it over four inches? Because fractions of a stitch, it's easier to count. So 21 stitches over four inches, which is what I got in stockinette. Uh, if I had only measured over an inch and to get that five and a quarter, I probably would have said it was five. And as, I, as you saw, when I just did the math for changing to a different size, like um, that can be significant. It can be a few inches and that can really change fit. And if you're going for an oversized fit, it's not such a big deal. But if you're going for a closer fit or you just wanna make sure it's accurate and you don't wanna be disappointed, then you really de do need to see those fractions of a stitch. And that's really hard to see when you're only measuring in an inch. So please, please measure over four inches and make your swatch bigger than that. I know, you're like, oh, she says 21 stitches over four inches. Well, if I cast on 21 stitches and knit back and forth and then, and then you know, do stockinette, um, that should be okay, right? Well, <sighs> not so much because those edge stitches get a little deformed being at the edges. Um, because instead of continuing on in a stitch, actually this way for me, um, you have to turn it around or you're changing um, back to purling, you know, if you're working back and forth. Uh, and that edge stitch is a little wonky in comparison to the nice stitches in the middle. So what you want is to have more of that good meaty middle part of your swatch or your sleeve and those are what you measure. Those are gonna be the most sort of even and solid and straightforward, and the edges tend to get a little messed up. So they're not as representative of your stitch count. So uh, next time I'm gonna be talking about the choices you can make in this sweater, how you can adapt basic cable to make it your own, and how I'm making a bunch of adaptations to actually create a whole new sweater that would be premium cable. So there's lots of things you can do. Uh, you know, there are people who want to make a cardigan, there are people who want a tighter neck, people who want a hood, people like me who are doing stripes and using a different cable pattern um, and adding a pocket and waist shaping. There are so many different fun things you can do. So next week I'm going to be talking about some of those options that you can do directly to your basic cable or that you can start to think about designing your own sweater. Because if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> but. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. And remember to give me your questions for the live show. Questions for this episode, feel free to post in the Ravelry forum, down in the comments on YouTube, on the blog page uh, at kathleendames.com. And uh, did I say Ravelry? I meant Ravelry too. All those places, or just hit reply on a newsletter and uh, ask me your question. Let me know and I will answer those in depth. The live show will be an hour long at whatever time we choose on that Friday the 18th. Uh, it will be during sort of working hours for me, uh, Eastern Standard Time on Friday. So I'm sorry if you are somewhere else and you won't be awake or you will be uh, having dinner or whatever during the time that we end up having the live show. But the live show will be recorded and um, once it's done, it will automatically go up onto YouTube and you'll be able to watch it anytime. So that's why if you won't be able to make it, be sure to ask me a question in advance. Make sure uh, that I answer your questions and help you make the best basic cable sweater you can make. So thank you so much for being here. That's it for me today. I hope things are going well with your basic cable. I'm excited that I have a sleeve done already on my premium cable, and now I'm getting started on the body, and soon I'll be doing pocket and all sorts of fun things, so, um, so that's all very exciting. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you have a great day and happy knitting. Mwah! Bye. This is season three of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Over the course of our 12-week season, we will knit basic cable together. 
Many thanks to Jen at Spirit Trail Fiberworks, Corinna at Picnic Knits, Tara Swiger and my fellow Starship Captains, and you for being part of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Don't forget to visit KathleenDames.com slash The Sweater to sign up for the newsletter. Just not a joiner? Purchase your copy of Basic Cable from my Ravelry shop anytime. Be sure to share your progress on social media with the hashtags Basic Cable and KD Sweater. Questions? Comments? Visit the Kathleen Dames Design Ravelry Forum today. Thanks so much for joining me and happy knitting.